I, I'm Mike Cave, we're at The Loft in Liverpool. This is my facility where um, I work out of mixing, mastering. So we're gonna show you the studio. Come through. <laughs> This is the control room, pretty much um, self-explanatory really, but you've got the control, a bit of outboard gear, HDX rig. Um, we're going to go into loads more detail in the video and you can see uh, how I'm using all the Sonics products. Um, and a few mix tips and tricks and just things that I do every day in my mix work, so um, hopefully it'll be of help to someone. Before Power Street I had a uh an assistant job at the what's now the Motor Museum, which was the Pink mu Pink Museum back in the day. I worked there for a year or two, but really I just wanted to get into Par Street because they had like the big rooms, the Neve, the SSL and all that. Um, so I just pestered them to death until they let me in the door. Um, got in there for best part of 10 years really. And then it was round about the time when most sessions were still running on tape, but we started to get um, like, we started to hire Pro Tools rigs in to do edits and things like that and then I was pretty much on the Pro Tools systems from day one, sound tools even really, uh, when it was like stereo editing and stuff. So I started getting quite a few Pro Tools jobs with other producers that really weren't that bothered about learning to use it. Um, so from that point on is when I started to freelance a little bit from Par Street because people were saying, oh, can you come and do this Pro Tools session for me? Uh, elsewhere so uh, eventually just sort of like, I had to leave Par Street and start doing the freelance jobs and then because there was a lot of those sort of programming jobs to do and editing jobs I needed somewhere to work from um, my own place really so it was it was almost like just timely that I needed a space and the loft was here um, up for sale and it just felt like the right thing to do um, and obviously we had to do quite a lot of work to get it to this Point now but it's just evolved over time you know I mean it did actually start more as a programming suite but it was just a bigger a lot bigger space so we just used the potential you know for um to the point where we're at now and we don't it doesn't really need to be anywhere else to be doing projects you know so it's pretty self-sufficient I probably have four or five EQs that I use just go to because I just know I can get a result with any particular one for a given situation and I use them all the time. Um, and then there's there's a few key plugins that I that I use constantly that I rely on. Um, but but probably you know you, sometimes you'll get something up that you haven't used for a while and you go oh, that that works. But for speed and and just getting results and quickly, I probably use a handful of plugins really to be honest. And I just know that they're going to get me a result that I need quickly. The Sonic stuff I've got um, the EQ. Which is amazing. Um, the Suppressor, which is phenomenal. That's like possibly my favourite plugin of all time. And I'll tell you, I'll explain why in a minute. Um, I've just got the Kodak recently, which is just makes so much sense to be able to hear stuff um, coded coming back in real time. I've always listened to my mixes back converted as MP3s and stuff like that, but it's just so time consuming, especially when you're doing so many recalls and versions of songs then you're having to convert them back in and out of iTunes and stuff like that. And to be honest with you, you're not really getting the chance to A-B stuff unless you start importing it all back in again. So it's just a massive time saver, to be honest. You know, the fact you can just switch in and out of it as well, you're actually hearing the differences rather than just listening separately, you know. So it just makes a, a massive load of sense. It's great, really good. And obviously most people are listening to music in those compressed formats, so it's absolutely crucial that stuff sounds great, you know, in, in MP3s and AACs. I always recommend that I send MP3s out. If people are going to be using MP3s or, or any other compressed format to be uploading anywhere or, or playing to people, I'll always say, listen, can I send my coded stuff? Because there's just too many, there's too much room for error and too many, too many mistakes can be made in the conversion process and people end up listening to the wrong things and it's uh, it's important stuff, you know, to make sure that the files are as they should be. And I'm not sure if a lot of people realise that when you're coding these things, it's adding level as well. It might only be half a dB or a dB. So these mixes that people are sending out that are maxed out, 
as soon as you convert them, they're into distortion straight away and people don't realize this. So I've got to do different, different mixes that are going to be converted slightly quieter, you know, and these things are just so important. And that's why a lot of stuff on iTunes sounds a bit crunchy, to be honest, because people are, people are clipping it before it even arrives at Apple, you know.